What's up guys, it's Tony with 4Money. On this episode, we are going to be visiting a resale shop that is closing down. Let's do it. So this lady reached out to me on the Facebook Marketplace based on the golf listing that I had with all the golf stuff. She said she had a ton of golf stuff that she wanted me to look at because she has a retail shop that's closing down and she wants to get rid of everything. She sent me hardly any pictures, so I'm very curious as to what she has. She says she has a couple warehouses full of stuff, and I'm hoping it's a lot of golf, but I don't know. But if there's other stuff, then we'll buy it too. So let's go check it out. So this warehouse we're in first, it's the smaller of the two. And the lady pretty much told us that this warehouse is where they store all the stuff that they don't know what to do with. It's a lot of random, a random assortment. There's no organization. It's just everywhere. I found all of these tennis strings in there. It's the first thing I saw when I walked in and I just started flipping through it. I wanted to see what was in this trash can. Like there, there was no organization, especially in this first little warehouse. I came across all these like football mouth guards. There was like some random beanie babies in there. I they didn't look very old. They just put stuff in there that they would go through later. Yeah, another another trash can full of just random lacrosse sporting goods. And it, it's, it was very interesting to find that it was, a lot of it was kind of thrown. They had a lot of toys on the on the upper part, which is kind of weird because you can't really get to it. If you really wanted to see it, you kind of had to reach for it. They had this tub full of tires, bike tires, and these look like they had been sitting there for a long time and, and tires are hard to move if they're not in pairs. If anybody knows what this is, please tell me what that is. I thought it was like packing small peanuts or something, but it didn't really look like it because there were small little balls. They had clothes. I don't know if that was personal or for sale. Awesome. Yeah, and Sam found this little box of goodies over here with some with some golf stuff and some random sports okay. stuff. There were some wiffle balls in there, some protective cups. These might have been sitting there for, for a while. And she said that she really didn't let anybody into this room in the back. A little blue Christmas tree. This section over here had like a lot of tools. And then Sam found this little like uh, recording, handheld old school uh, VHS recorder. There's a lot, yeah, here, here are the tools. There's a lot of tools. I, I've dealt with tools before and I still kind of do. Uh, I didn't even get into those because I didn't know if they were broken, returned. I found that generator there too. That was a cool one, but we looked in the back of it. It was missing some pieces. This giant pallet was just a bunch of printers and printer parts. I think it literally arrived like that and they just left it there. That is very hard to move because it's hard to test. Even if the printer turns on and works, the ink is expensive. That That's a very difficult one to move. We found this giant gun safe. I think the lock the lock was broken on it. This little miniature coffee table, which I don't think had the legs, but it was a coffee table that you screw the legs in. Yeah, we, we passed on that. Then I found this other box down here too. I moved all these uh, football protective uh, pads out of the way. And lo and behold, more of these mouth guards, tons of these mouth guards. It was interesting. These were not that old, but it seems like they arrived and they put them in this room right away, which was kind of surprising. I found a lot of these lacrosse sticks. Those sell on eBay for about 30, 35 bucks and shipping, even if I got them for five, six bucks, wasn't worth it. I, I passed on those lacrosse sticks. And Sam's over here still looking around for more stuff down here. Maybe I should have taken that as like bubble balls that you can fight inside of. And Sam found these uh, 
I, I believe it was like Dyson vacuum parts. Um, maybe that was for for a personal vacuum of his, but those parts go for a lot, but you have to know which vacuum they go for. And like I said, the toys are up top. All right, now we're gonna go into the big, big warehouse. This is kind of where they had most of their stuff that was actually displayed in categories. And this is what we came for. I, I didn't know any of this looked like this before we got there. She didn't send me any pictures, like I said. This was really cool. This is a little cash register where they kind of would ring people up. And I'm kind of just gonna take you through it, what we, what we saw. Some of uh, the golf balls, we brought them over here and we put them in this basket, kind of started collecting stuff that we thought we were gonna take. This basket over here full of like football gloves and what I was kind of doing was figuring out if there was any value in me taking it. Even if I bought that for two or three dollars, selling it for 10, shipping it for four, three in fees, some of it wasn't worth it unless you got it for free. And I didn't want to offend her, so it's not everything we were really interested in. You saw there's some costumes over there, some religious uh, plaques, a whole section of shoes. The shoes were pretty cheap, but I, I, didn't, I didn't really pay too much attention to that. Now this one over here, I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself for not asking. All these purses, going back and looking at this, I probably should have asked because those obviously are new purses and I didn't even ask. I was more fascinated with the rack and I didn't ask about the purses. Those probably would have been pretty cool. I probably could have got them cheap too and I, I didn't. Another little section of, of sports stuff. It was a lot of, a lot of really random stuff like they didn't just buy whoever they bought from they didn't just buy one kind of stuff they bought sporting goods homewares clothing see these are some like little fishing vests and very lightweight see those are i guess there's some like uh, lanterns that you hang I, I didn't bother with that those are actually pretty cool these caps we actually did purchase and these uh, baseball bags, these Demarini baseball bags, we did buy those, but we'll, we'll talk about those a little later. See more of those hanging lanterns. I, I didn't pay attention to those. If, if you guys see something here that I missed and I don't know what it was, please comment down below. Call me out on it. There's, I wanna learn too. This whole section of games, I didn't look at it closely enough and maybe there's some stuff I missed. Please tell me. They had a, a lot of stuff, a lot of tools. There was an orbital sander here that I passed on and I regretted it the second we drove away because now I still need one and I don't have it and I could have bought that one for a really good price. There is a lot of small little tools here. They have some knee braces, some ankle braces. And she offered me a good price on them. And for personal use, yes, great prices. For resale, not so much. Those little golf bags are called caddy dens. You can put them in a man cave. This whole aisle here was dedicated to toys. Toys, toys, toys. If you guys see a toy that you know has value and I missed it, I didn't buy it, okay? Call me out on it. This, I, this, section here of toys i had no clue what i was looking at like that pokemon one i didn't see it when i was there i'm looking at it now maybe it's got value these little uh duck dynasty uh, bobbleheads <laughs> look at that that's cool man there's a lot of a lot of toys here this warehouse was a lot more organized than that first one we went to and it was starting to look a lot more promising at this point more lacrosse sticks those are really really cool and this wall right here had a lot of um, like lawn, little miscellaneous lawn things. And I was kind of calculating in my mind quickly, is it worth buying it even at half off their price? Is it worth the resale? And some of this stuff wasn't because I didn't want to spend $5 to make $3 online. Locally, that's okay. Online, not so much. They had a lot of housewares in this last, this last aisle. 
this is very very well organized for being a warehouse in the middle of nowhere very well organized now this last part they kind of extended it past the warehouse it's a little covered canopy area i'm looking at that workout equipment maybe i should have paid a little more attention to that but we didn't have a lot of space and i didn't want to take stuff that wasn't for sure that worked see some more workout equipment they had these electric lawn tools back here i i didn't bother with that this gas powered one I, I tried giving it a pull it seemed like it was seized so i passed up on that one now we're back in the main warehouse there's a few golf things we found this traveling case this uh four wheel uh golf push cart some more bicycle stuff here it was, a, it was a pretty good assortment of stuff in this place. And then I finally found Sam again, of course, looking at fishing stuff, this whole wall full of fishing stuff. He was probably there like 15, 20 minutes, just in awe of all the fishing stuff they had. And he, he, knew, he knew what he was looking at. All right, now we finally started to kind of pull the stuff outside. This is the kind of stuff that we knew we wanted. So we started laying it out, the lady said, Laid outside, it's all yours. We'll go through it later. We'll give you a price and then we'll keep going. These tennis rackets is what really, really excites me. We'll talk about them a little later, but I ended up getting all of these tennis rackets. This was probably the coolest part of the whole day. Look, check it out. <laughs> we emptied out the whole box. So it was full of tennis rackets. And then finally, the golf clubs i found the golf clubs these were really really cool and i was super excited to find these the sale price was 70 dollars in the store some of these clubs retail for 100 120 and we had them all in one bag and i just thought wow i i am glad we found this this i didn't even buy them at this point and i was just excited this the whole trip was worth it at this point man that was really cool to find that to watch out for those. Yeah, there's some big spiders in there. All right, now we're just going to bring a box, put it back on the truck and start filling it up with stuff. What are you doing there, Tony? Uh, I'm making space for all the stuff we just bought. I'm trying to maybe we'll put some of the smaller stuff that's those hats they can fly out away. we'll probably put it inside the truck yep and then some of this bigger right, stuff that's some. heavy will, will weigh it down some nice hats man yeah pretty nice well, make some space there <laughs> What or what? Oh, the umbrella? Yeah, the golf club umbrella. Spider here, Tony. So we just left, man, and we're driving back home from uh, uh, Treasure Hunt, New Caney. It's about an hour and a half away from where we live. And we came to go check it out. We, we just left right now with a ton of stuff. And I'd say we, we, we a got a bunch of watermelons, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just bought a bunch of fruit. We're gonna, we just, we're gonna flip some fruit. Yeah, huh? we, gotta, we gotta sell it today before it goes bad. Before we got there, I was really excited to go. 
because the people who I buy golf stuff normally, they, they've been out for some time now, maybe about a couple months. So when this lady reached out to me, I was really excited to get there. And then when we got there, she had the golf stuff like at her house. <laughs> and it was kind of a turn off, like, oh my God, we're not going to yeah. see any of this stuff. But she had a few golf things there, right? Yeah, she did have some like driver covers and stuff that we didn't end up buying. But the actual golf clubs, the reason why I went, they weren't there. So her husband ended up bringing them a couple minutes later. But our initial impression when we got there was, oh my God, this might be a bust. You could tell it came in, in, in pallets, right? So she, right. she was buying these things in pallets and she basically, they, they opened up a store uh, kind of at, in their backyard almost, yeah, right? it was, yeah, literally the backyard of their house, like the lady lives on the property. I was also kind of worried about the pricing on there, right? Right. Prices they had on there were too high for what we wanted to pay. Yeah. Like if something retailed for a hundred bucks, they had it priced for like 60 and I mean it's a, it's a good deal but for what we're trying to do it was too high and we weren't asking about pricing too soon I mean we were just kind of right. getting to know her first seeing her product you know kind of chatting it up before we asked about pricing because we knew we wanted to buy a bunch of stuff so the prices as uh, not the final end consumer were high but for someone else who was buying it for themselves right I mean, the prices were not bad yep but for what we were trying to do they were a little too high and then she came on later and said look the price you see there i'll take half off of that so if you go based on you know a dollar then 40 percent off and then half of that now you're talking about 30 percent of right. the retail price right. so 70 kind of, 70 percent off 70 was pretty off. good i'm a big believer that whenever you're looking to flip stuff you, you make your money on the buy right right like the sell part yeah there you, you can do something like that you may sell up here and there for a little bit more but it's really when you buy stuff that you really get that value that i think they have so much volume of people that they're able to buy by the truckload she says she buys 18 wheelers like once a week of just a bunch of stuff and they have so much traffic of people there that they can they can always get new new product because they know the the amount of traffic the stuff's gonna sell yep but right now they're not getting anything new so they're just trying to liquidate everything for what they paid for or maybe even less yeah so it was it was a good good opportunity for us even though she'd been selling like there i think she you, you taught her a good amount of things yeah, there kind yeah. of shared some lessons learned or some gave her right. some tips and advice on how she could move stuff one thing i enjoy about the flipping process is to teach other people you know tips and tricks like obviously my motto is flip to fund your passion and whenever we started talking to her about flipping she got really excited yeah she would buy sandals for 20 bucks and then sell them on ebay for more than 100 that. Yeah, 200 yeah, yeah. or something and she just lit up talking about that so she was a fellow flipper that enjoyed the process yeah. she said she had a normal eight to five during right. the week and she kind of opened the resale shop on the weekend she said she liked to do shopping so if she can sell a bunch of stuff, use the money to fund her passion, which was shopping, then that's what she wants to do. But it became more of like a burden Work. for her. Yeah, it becomes, yeah, you, when you, once you kind of lose that, like yeah. it, once, once, it, once it doesn't become fun anymore, then it's like, man, why am I doing this? I was really impressed with Tony. You know, I, 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 I see Tony and Tony tells me, hey, we're gonna go buy this and that. And, uh, and so, but today I got to see Tony's negotiating skills <laughs> in, in person. I'm definitely a big fan of them. And uh, maybe you should do some videos on how to negotiate. Well, no, yeah. you shouldn't, because that's no, the, the, no, no. <laughs> we got a lot of uh, tennis rackets, yeah, 55 we, of them. Oh, yeah, we got 55 of these tennis rackets. And I think most of them are junior tennis rackets, but they retail for like 25 to 35 a piece. And they were all new. And I asked her, what happens if I take them all? She said, $1.50 her racket so we bought the, all these 55 rackets for like i think 82 bucks or something to her it was worth selling it for that yeah because the rackets take up a lot of space and who's going to come buy one racket at a time for 250 yeah. maybe a couple people right but for, to have somebody just come clear your inventory it was worth it to her the stuff you uh you got today what are you most excited about with out here and do a u-turn um and, i mean obviously it's going to be the golf stuff for me because i'm running really low on golf equipment and I've got people asking me every day for golf stuff, so um, it's it's gonna be the golf stuff. I wish she would have given me the bag too, but she said that was her personal bag. It yeah. was a very nice one, but the golf clubs is what I'm really excited about. And what about you, Sam? What are you most excited about? Uh, well, obviously we got some fishing lures. Most of you guys that know that, uh, you know, you do any kind of fishing in salt water, these Paul Brown lures are, are very popular in the winter. Overall, was it worth the drive over here? I think so. I, I think it, I came for the golf stuff and then we ended up buying a bunch of other stuff which made the trip really worth it. 
This is awesome, man. I think I had more fun doing this one because I was able to go in there and individually pick out what I want. These are extremely cool. Uh, I played a little bit of tennis growing up and I still play with my neighbors every now and then. They're all junior, so I won't be able to use any for myself, but these are all super cool. The retail on all these rackets together is $1,650. That's crazy. Right over here, we've got these five tennis bags. Okay, all together, these retail for $250. I got these for $4. Those are really cool. Right over here, we've got these two red uh, tennis bags. And these together retail for $160. We got this for five bucks a piece. We got these two Texas Ranger hats that I got for $2 a piece. And we have all of these mouth guards right here. All of these mouth guards. Now, she told me that she had counted them and there was 40 when she counted them. So I paid 50 cents a piece and it came out to 20 bucks for all of them. But when I look at my little tally, there was actually 72 mouth guards. So I got the 72 mouth guards for $20 each. So less than 50 cents. They retail for $18 a piece. They're all new. I'm probably going to sell them in bulk because there's so many of them. So down here we have these 10 uh, Demarini baseball backpacks. These retail for $50 a piece and I got them for $4. Over here we have these 25 tennis strings. I should give them to me for 20 bucks. So a little less than a dollar a piece. That's really cool. There's a total of 18 or 19 golf clubs. 11 are new. Three of them are just these shafts right here, loose shafts. All these right here, not including these used ones down in front. The retail on those is a thousand and I paid a hundred bucks for all of them. She knew the value of the golf clubs was really good. And I, I told her, I said, look, I'm not gonna try to lowball you on these clubs. They're, the value is, is really good. She had some troubles on eBay and I, I understood. I said, I told her, look, I'm gonna sell these clubs for about 30 to 35 a piece. I'm gonna ship them for $10 and I'm gonna pay about, you know, three or $4 in fees. So if I pay more than $5, the effort is not worth it to me. And I, I told her, look, you don't have to sell them to me. These, these are great clubs, but if you wanna get rid of them, I, I, I don't wanna lowball you, but for them to be worth it to me and the prices I normally buy golf clubs at, I, I gotta get them for five bucks each. And we agreed a hundred bucks for everything, which to me is really good. Um, she could have sold them for more and she knew that but she didn't want to go the ebay route because she had got burned in the past with shipping and she was okay selling them to me because i i was honest with what i was going to do with them i was honest with their value and i was honest with what i was going to sell them for and she appreciated that so 100 bucks she agreed to it and i mean I, I i respect her for for doing that because she might still be left with them after all this is said and done so we ended up paying for all this stuff 292 dollars the retail value of everything I bought was $5,400. And everything is new except for those four golf putters, right? So we ended up paying 95% off retail for everything. And similar to the bike video I did, it's the same margins. Uh, sell a few items, get all your money back. Everything else is profit. And normally stuff sells 50, 60, 70% off retail because we bought it at 95% off. This stuff's gonna sell pretty good. Tennis is so big in my area. I'm just gonna post them on the Facebook Marketplace. Eight to 12, I think is very fair. And this is the racket that Evelyn decided to keep. Let me see your swing. Let me see your swing. All right. All right, guys. It's been about three months since I visited that retail shop that was closing down. And this is all that's left. Just this one bag from that huge picture of all the stuff we got. I promise you, just one tennis bag is left three months later. So I posted mostly everything on the Facebook Marketplace. A lot of this stuff I was able to ship but I wanted to try to sell most of it locally. I'm trying to establish kind of a reputation for having a lot of sports stuff. So this one was gonna be pretty good for me to sell locally. Now I did sell some stuff on eBay that I thought was a lot of value and people weren't gonna appreciate that locally. All right, the, the one that got me smiling every time somebody bought one was the tennis rackets. So we had 55 of those tennis rackets and they all sold except for the one that my daughter kept. They all sold for 10 to 12 dollars and the cool thing about it was that nobody haggled me on price because they retail for 30 40 bucks so 10 to 12 bucks a piece some people were buying two or three at a time and that was just like every time somebody bought one i i just knew how much we paid for it and to me it's awesome they're getting a good deal because they don't have to spend 30 or 40 
but at the price we bought them at 10 12 bucks to me was just like it was cool every time so the Demarini baseball bags i thought i bought nine there was actually 10 and those all sold for 10 bucks a piece too that's not a lot of margin but still those those backpacks moved the two red tennis bags sold for 15 a piece we bought those for five and these bags i sold for 15 a piece as well and they're not as cool as the red ones but they're still cheaper than what you're going to pay for them the tennis strings I really couldn't sell those locally. That's more of an eBay item. So I sold the tennis strings on eBay and all of those strings sold for 75 bucks, which I think is pretty cool because we only paid a dollar for those strings. And there was quite a few of them. So $75 I think is really good. The mouth guards, those I sold on eBay. So those sold for $200 for all 75 mouth guards. Now I hope whoever bought them has like a football team or a peewee league or something that they can actually utilize them. That's not quite $3 per mouthpiece so i hope they can use them and if not they'll resell them they'll make money too but i got rid of all 75 of them at one time for 200 dollars minus shipping and fees the profit was 155 and remember we paid i think 20 bucks for all of them because we originally thought there was only 40. so at 50 cents a piece 20 bucks turned into 155 that's really cool all right now my favorite part was the golf wedges we ended up selling all of that for 332 dollars most of that was local because people know i buy and sell a lot of golf stuff so I sent messages to a few people who bought from me before who have told me, hey, whenever you get more of this, 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 let me know. I reached out to them, they bought it, no questions asked, no haggling on price. They trusted the product they had, they trusted me, and that was it. Those moved pretty quickly. There was a couple that sold on eBay, like those shafts. Those are a little harder to sell locally. eBay, they sold really quickly. All right, so the total combined sales, and that, now this is includes eBay minus fees, was $1,387 in money received and we paid 292 for everything so the total profit was 1095 dollars i think that's really cool one it gets me talking to people it gets me it gets people coming to my place and looking at other stuff now I'll, i will say a lot of people that did come to buy some of this stuff bought other stuff i had some of them bought hats that i had some of them bought some other golf stuff i had now the numbers i'm reporting to you here are what they came to buy from this new Caney resale shop. But a lot of the people bought some of the bicycle stuff I had. One guy even bought a shirt that my wife sells. I really love that when somebody shows up for one specific thing, like they showed up for tennis rackets and they come here and say, oh, you got tennis bags too? Oh man, that's really cool. And then, oh wow, you got, and then, it's, and then it turns into this random, where'd you get all this stuff? And let me explain to you what I do. And it turns into a cool conversation. Will I get another opportunity like this? I hope so, but I don't think this happens too often. So it turned out to be a really cool experience. I had a great time. Worst case, I break even, have a good time, move on. But now I have almost $1,100 in money minus taxes to fund my golf passion. And to me, knowing that I didn't have to put in normal eight to five hours, that this money was made from flipping money for money, right? I can now use this to fund my passion. Now guys, you don't have to go out there and go see a store that's closing down, but you can go to Goodwill, you can go to a garage sale, you can check the Facebook marketplace. A lot of the times you can find value and buy that stuff, sell it, use the profits to fund your passion. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I had a great time doing this one and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. Not, not sure what you are doing there. Hey, Tony. Tony. I thought you had it recording already. I wasn't recording. <laughs> God dang. All right, come back. Hey. Hey, th this time I'll record it, all right? So, so we so we will have to do it again, all right? So.